often I need two holes so that I can squirt. <coughs> it goes deep on that sausage. Do you see that? What the f is that? I'm pure butcher this man. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> mate, well, it won't come apart. Right, Mike, if you're trying to play a trick on me and this is like your spook in a f Fuck <laughs> 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 off, Mike. I ain't eating that. Eating that. Bimmy's Food. And I'm Josh Goodgin. And welcome to the Breaking Bread Podcast, where each episode we have a good old fashioned chinwag about some interesting topics, as well as occasionally being joined by a special guest or two along the way. If you don't know already, I'm an online content creator, or what the kids call these days, YouTuber. <laughs> and uh, Josh over here has a uh, video production company, he's a professional videographer. In other words, he has a real job, but he does occasionally dip his toe into the pool of YouTube, and uh, we're going to be your hosts, if that wasn't already abundantly clear. With it being called the Breaking Bread Podcast, we're going to go for a great British Bake Off theme, because it's it's a worldwide show, people enjoy it, I believe. I've seen you tweeted about it, so we are going to get into that a little bit later. Um, but I wanted to do like a little segment that I want to bring into the occasional podcast, because I, I, I know you like TikTok, because you've got, you've got two million followers on TikTok. <laughs> There is somebody who's got who's got the name because I thought I might as well. I hate TikTok, right? <laughs> but I thought I'm, I'm, I should probably get the name in case somebody tries to, you know, masquerade as me. Yeah. But I was too late. Somebody's got the name. So if anyone's uh, watching or listening, I am not on TikTok. But if anyone's on there pretending to be me, yes, yeah, it's, it's not me. Well, I think TikTok's like I, I enjoy it. You know, I've uh, I've been doing a bit of diving through because I want to do a section called we'll call it TikTok Corner. Oh, right. Okay. I found some videos that I think you'll enjoy. I think the viewers and listeners will enjoy. Um, so that's the first thing that I want to uh, to bring up. So this one sort of stood out to me first because have you ever seen anybody with a beard transplant? No. Right. Check this out. Check this out. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, nice face tattoo. I think the music's sensual as well. It's a bit erotic. Yeah, erotic, yeah. This is a transplanted beard. This dude had a beard transplant, and he's, he's like talking about what's going on with the beard, and he's got he's got to drink through a straw, for starters. You, you, well, that's good practice for having an actual beard when it grows out, because you have to do that a lot. Otherwise, especially if you're drinking like milkshake, you know, like a Five Guys bacon oh, yeah. milkshake. But um, you might as well just get it tattooed, though, if it's, unless that's going to grow out properly. That just looks like it's been tattooed on or like drawn on with a crayon. It, yeah, I'm, it's, I'm not a fan, but I saw it and thought of you, and I thought, I wonder what you, what, what's your take on this? We've got beard mem memorabilia everywhere. We do, yeah. I, I can't grow a beard, to be fair. I should probably get one. Yeah, I don't think I've ever even seen you with, like, a five o'clock shadow. No. Do you actually shave? Yeah. All right. Um, but, yeah, I mean... Once a week, whether I need it or not. All right. It's okay. like a bath. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, if I ever get, like, leukemia or something, I hope I don't, but, like, if I need... <laughs> well, my hair would fall out. I know it went kind of dark pretty quickly, but... Um, I wouldn't want to not have a beard, so either I would wear a fake beard or I could have that done. What's Matt Lucas? What's Matt Lucas thing? He's he's got the alopecia. Alopecia. Hal alopecia. Hal is that alopecia. Like, that's like half pepper, half <laughs> hair loss disease. Yeah. Alopecia. Yeah. My okay. dad had that once. Yeah. He he, he kind of grew out of it though. <laughs> his hair grew back. <laughs> he had like a big patch on the back of his head missing. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Fair play. Right. The next next video on TikTok corner is this guy, which I, again you'll appreciate it. I, I like the art for, from this, especially as soon as we've already done shit songs about food. Uh, we've got this guy. I want chicken wings, two pounds, spicy. I'd like some ranch to dip them in. I call that a chicken win. <laughs> <laughs> I like the original song, and that's funny because my, uh, that I'm giving something away here, but this year's Christmas song has the word chicken wings in it. It's not that song, but um, that's is this a, a, that's is a, this a worldwide exclusive. Yeah, it is. So it's got yeah. the words chicken wings in. The, the the word chicken wings, the words chicken wings are in the song, yeah. How excited? Yeah, yeah. That's weird. The last one from TikTok Con, which is super relevant for this, uh, this podcast. Um, innuendos from the Great British Bake Off. I think that's probably one of the best things to come out of the show. We'll, we'll, we'll go into the show. A I love bit. a good innuendo. But, um, Old Pr old Prue has been dropping another innuendo, so I think you'll uh, you'll enjoy this one. Often I need two holes so that I can squirt. <coughs> you squeeze the bag. Yeah. When you meet that little bit of resistance, <laughs> usually means it's full. <laughs> Why are you laughing? 
we're just children. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Like she doesn't know. Yeah, that, that felt a bit um, rehearsed or, or dropped in there maybe. I don't know. Old Prue's a goer. She loves it. <laughs> <laughs> we're taking a step away from that Spotify deal. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the pan already. What's your take on the actual show of Great British Bake Off? Um, I, I don't watch it, I'll be honest. So um, it, it's hard for me to uh, to comment. Food's involved, so um, I, I approve of that element of it. I just, I, one thing I don't like about it is from, I mean, I've not seen every episode, I've seen a few, but it seems to me like I, I think a lot of that food goes to waste. That's what, a few of my tweets have been around that kind of area. People say to me, oh, you're wasting food and stuff. But every time, I, that's a really popular show. And every time I've seen it, I'm thinking, unless the cast, the, the sorry, the crew, is like 40 people strong. A lot of that food is going to be thrown away and people accept that. Like it's an attempt, you know? Especially um, how many times does that get commented on your videos? Oh uh, yeah. I mean like innumerable amounts. I, I can't count how many times that's been on. Thousands, hundreds of thousands probably. Fair enough. I mean, my, my biggest sort of gripe with the show is how underwhelming the sort of the end result is. <laughs> I think to win the show, you get a plate. Yeah, I, I asked you, I, I, we were talking about this before we started um, recording, and I said, what, what do you get? Because normally in like reality shows like this, where there's a competition, they win, say like, if it's the X, X Factor, you get a recording contract, right? So something like this, I would expect you get like a contract at a big restaurant or like a bakery or something, but a, they get a handshake and a plate. <laughs> you, you might not even get a handshake, but you definitely get a plate. Is that all you get, Mike? Do, do, do we know any more detail? But that, that's the thing, like you look at um, Gordon Ramsay, he does Hell's Kitchen, but at least then they, they get to become like a head chef at a kitchen of his. That's a good good gig. I'm pretty sure they get like, you know, a six-figure contract. It's like, you know what it is? It's like the equivalent um, of Pointless as a game show. Do you ever think that? Like I watch Pointless and I'm like, they go through all this to to win like 2,000 quid. And I'm like, <laughs> come on now. This, this, is, took, this is prime time. They've took a week off work. It's like that. It's, it's the same thing, but for like a reality competition show like they don't get anything but a plate it's a plate like solid gold so, so they get flowers and a cake stand is the official prize <laughs> so you don't get a, you get a cake stand yeah is it made out of like 24 karat gold or something can you wait can you scrap it in <laughs> that is absolutely unbelievable like it's not even like the plate i was thinking at least it's kind of decorative <laughs> yeah, I mean, stand. what's that what's the show that um paddy mcginnis does with um the like, dating show what's that show take me out Take me out, yeah. I don't, I don't watch that nonsense. Yeah, so like, take me out. At least then they get like a holiday away. It might go to shit, but they get to go away for a, a week or two. Like that's at least a little bit of a payoff. Yeah, for but humiliating yourself on. So it says two. online that besides the flowers and cake stand, many of the Bake Off stars go on to earn massive sums of money through appearances, cookbooks, and launching cooking schools. Ah, but that's not ah. that. That's kind of like after the fact, isn't it? That's not for the work. Sure, you might you might not you know you might die three days after and you got nothing but a cake stand. <laughs> Shocking. Shocking. Was it Channel 4? Yeah. I'd expect no less. I oh, negotiated have you done with them a few have you, times. Have yeah. you done some work with Channel 4? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we could probably get into that in a later episode, but I remember they tried to get me to do one show in particular, um, which was, quotes, about the British competitive eating scene. I mean, there isn't one, right? But, um, <laughs> you are it. <laughs> yeah, and they said, oh, we do this show, and I quoted them a price, right, for, for a few days of shooting. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, oh, no, no, you want to do this for an exposure show? And I'm like, don't come up me with the E word. <laughs> my, my, my bank doesn't take exposures as mortgage payment. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it doesn't surprise me that they're a bit stingy. What about, so another thing I want to talk about, the judges, like what's your take on the judges? Because we've got Paul Hollywood, the obviously the main man, he's been there for a while. Uh, and then we've got Lady Called Prue, but what's what what qualifies them to like to be the the judges? Because I watched I watched a show recently, right? And I, I promise you, a, a lady fell to her knees. It, it, he sort of like lured her. Lured, can, I, can, I just, can you just ask you about this? Can you have a look? And he stuck his hand out really fast like that, I and she that. she like <laughs> ah, like fell to her knees. <laughs> I started crying for a handshake. So we're talking about prizes, like. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I I feel like I don't I don't know who I know who Paul Hollywood is. I don't know what his um his heri- like you know what his expertise are like what he's done professionally. Um, I think you said he was like he was into some kind of baking, which you would assume he is. But um, I think he's just in there for the for the the mummies, right? Who like a little bit of uh eye candy. He's kind of like he's one of those. He's not like you know Michael Bublé is one of those people that mums like, but he's like unattainable. Paul Hollywood's kind of like a middle of the road. Like they could believe that maybe like they see him. In a, in a bar one night, they could pull him, you know. He has got, he's got very blue eyes. I noticed that. I don't know if it's the colour grade on the uh, on the actual show, but he's got piercing eyes. Check that out next time. 
Oh, Mike's just give us some more information. Apparently, it comes from a family of bakers. Uh, his dad had a bakery, and then he was the head baker at a number of hotels around the UK. So he was the master baker of this family. <laughs> <laughs> Cut that out, Mike. That was terrible. <laughs> Cut that out. That's the level of this show. <laughs> can we get some, Mike? Can you get us some info on Prue? Because I want I want to know what her background is. Um, all I know about Prue is. And she wound you up a little bit. Yeah, I was going to say, I've got, a, I've got a bit of beef with Prue because I, 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 the, somebody asked her, but there was a, an eating contest, I think in Scotland with, I don't know what they were eating, but um, somebody asked her what she thought about it. And she said, oh, it's, this is disgusting. You know, it's disgraceful behavior. Um, and I thought it was a bit rich from somebody who gets paid every week to go on a show and just eat a bunch of cake. A corner of, a corner of cake. Yeah, which presumably she doesn't need. She could probably get by with... Um, few square meals you know and um i'm not sure what her uh, daily caloric maintenance is but she's probably oh over it i think but I, I, yeah I, I just thought like what's the point in criticizing when you're on a show which probably weighs quite a lot of food indeed i mean my only take on prue is like and i think she's a bit of a legend for this in uh 2017 the show was coming up to the final obviously the, the recorded months 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 before it actually goes out she were obviously on a jollies at christmas time in australia i think it was australia or new zealand she was in the Southern Hemisphere, um, she tweeted, congratulations to the winner the morning before it actually got announced. So she doesn't understand time zones. She doesn't understand time zones <laughs> and she ruined it for everybody. How does she not know that? Because like every, every time they do like the, you know, New Year's celebrations, I remember at the Millennium, the first place they went to is like, you know, New Zealand where the, the, the New Year starts first. I, I, yeah, I don't know. I like it. I think I think it's a legendary move to just ruin everybody's days because you know it's like she, she should have put spiral alert. Congratulations! Did that, affect, did that affect like the bookies and stuff? Were people were bookies still taking bets and stuff at that time? Can you do that? Do you think? Do you think you can put bets on? You can. You definitely can put bets. Can I, really? I put them on like not on Bake Off, but I put them on like TV <laughs> specials go. before for sure. Not that I have a gambling problem or anything, but um, yeah, you can definitely put them on TV shows. I think too. I think there were too many whispers though. You know, obviously if you if you had a mate that's been on and he knows who's won it. This you can do like an inside job. You can be like, who's won it then? All right, then I'll put 500 quid on it. Yeah, maybe there's like a cutoff point. But, um, it does actually say on Google that, uh, unfortunately due to the pre-recorded nature of the show, most bookies won't allow you to place bets on the uh, outcome. Uh, However, maybe it's something like live shows. That doesn't stop them giving you their opinion on who might emerge victorious, but there's no like official betting for it. Yeah, that makes sense. Because like you could earn a few quid, couldn't you? Yeah, you could, yeah. And sure. inside it. I'm pretty sure that's like illegal in business, you know, if, if you know that like some trades are going to happen beforehand. Inside of trading, yeah, I know I know a lot about that. Not that I was ever found guilty of it. Ah, <laughs> so that's why you've got all that money, is it? <laughs> just, a yeah, little, you... just a little more on proof for you guys. So she actually did start a Michelin star restaurant, which she sold in the 90s. And then she was on Great British Menu for 11 years and came into Great British Bake Off in 2017, replacing Mary Berry. Please tell me that her restaurant was called The Pro Is In The Pudding. If, if that wasn't the name of it, then she needs help. That's what I would have called it. Well, so, so she got a Michelin star? Yeah, so she started a business supplying high quality food, business lunches. This grew to become Leith's Good Food, a party and event caterer, and it did end up getting a Michelin star in Notting Hill. It's probably worth noting, this is this is obviously going to be the worst podcast in history for a, for the first one, because we are amateurs. Uh, that's Mike in the corner that you can hear. Yeah, can um, you, we got we got Mike in because a study showed you know that when you when people call call centers and stuff that they uh, they relate to they get less mad about things that have gone wrong if it's a scouser on the phone. <laughs> so we've got um, Mike in the back. He's putting on his posh scouser voice, but yeah, um, he's not scouser nonetheless. He's no um, <laughs> Paddy Pimblet, is he? Like, let's be honest, you don't say lad after every every word. Mine we shouldn't have Paddy. a Paddy because like we, we actually <laughs> well, I, I was I was DMing back and forth with Paddy recently. I don't know if you saw. In fact, it's because we were watching him one of your videos, wasn't it? Yeah, because I, I did a video where I, I he's, I think he's got some kind of eating problem, right? Because be, between fights, he balloons up, right? Yeah. Cause he just loves food, which I, I, I find that quite funny. Um, but yeah, he, he did a video where he mentioned what he ate before, you know, the world went into lockdown because he was panicking. He wasn't going to be able to get like his Mackey's fix and stuff. Um, so I thought it'd be a fun idea for a video to do that. It turned out like he uh, he had watched a few of my videos before. And of course he came across that one because his name was in the title. So we kind of messaged back and forth. And I think he wanted to do like a, a, a 10,000 calorie challenge, but I think he, he kind of wimped out a bit. So if, you, if you're listening, Paddy, <laughs> sort it out, flat. I know what got in the way of Paddy and his 10,000 calorie challenge because I was DMing him back and forth. 
obviously he, he, he put a tweet out saying, oh, I'm looking for uh, like a videographer or like a video crew to be able to do this. He got inundated with requests. Um, I messaged him saying that we've worked together. You'd backed me. And he, it's just like, yes, lad, let's do it. And then what, a week later, he launched, he, he, he signed this seven figure contract with um, Barstool, Barstool Sports. Sports. Seven figure is it what is well it depends on like how he's been paid and stuff i don't want to get into the legalities of it but i i, I never get people signing contracts with like um agencies like that when you could just do it all yourself the dude's got like half what half a million instagram followers bear in mind he went from probably about eighty thousand. then he did his ufc debut settled a bunch of stuff in the octagon and it went up to seven hundred thousand after one he, he i think they're like pushing him to be the next mcgregor that's the uh that's the vibe we're getting yeah, yeah, I've heard that, but um, yeah, I, I never get why um, why did, you could just do it all yourself. Like, why, why give you know why why limit your earning power like creatively? If you want to do a video, you could just do it yourself on YouTube. It's true, but it's like I mean, it's easy. If if if, if somebody came over to you now, like, there's a, a million pound contract. Oh yeah, you did say seven figures. That, seven, that does change seven things. Seven figures. And he'll get the production. They probably they probably scripted for him. He'll just have to like rock up. And, just turns up. Yeah, that's an easy life. That. Bake off, Paddy lad. <laughs> All right, back to Bake Off then, Mr. Beard. So the show itself, I actually quite enjoy it, to be fair. Um, but th- they split in three parts. The, like they start off and they sort of bake some shit. Don't know, I, can't, I don't know what the technical, <laughs> like the technical way of saying that is. They bake some at the beginning. I, I kind of just like, I, I'm flicking through TikTok at that point. Then they do the technical, right? Which I personally think is the best part. And then they do the showstopper. Um, do we know what the first part is? Yes, yeah, so the first one is the signature challenge. All oh, right, this sig- is where they get to show off their sort of tried and tested recipes. Oh, uh, right. so the practice that that makes sense. So they they do something that they're really good at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty much. So that's pretty easy. We'll I, I, I'd be great on that. Like I I just turn up and do like uh, grilled cheese donuts. I mean, I've seen your cooking ability. <laughs> <laughs> it's simple, but like I think I'd, I'd excel in that first category. When it came to the showstoppers and all that, nah, I'd, I'd be I'd be doomed. But the first one I'd do, all right? The yeah, first one does have to be related to the theme of the show, though. So like, if it's, oh yeah, because they're split into weeks. They're like, oh, this this week we're gonna do shoe pastry, and that's what they do for the week. Then they do biscuits. You you told me like to to because I don't watch the show, right? You told me to do like a little bit of research. So I watched the most recent one, and um. It won't be the most recent one when this podcast goes up, but they were making out that Paul Hollywood had invented shoe nuts, right? And I was like, that's a beignet, right? That's like an old Acadian uh, recipe. It's like, it's, it's common now in like s- the southern parts of America, right? Which is like just fried shoe, pa- shoe pastry yeah. made into like a donut. Paul Hollywood did not invent that. Like, I don't know if Channel 4, the researchers are, are watching, but you need a wreck on that. It, that hey, doesn't happen. <laughs> how, how dare you let the truth get in the way of a good story? <laughs> Yeah, but um, yeah, I, I don't know where, where I was going that, but um, <laughs> the, the liars, Channel Four. What we've established so far is you've got like a vendetta against Channel Four. There's no chance of a contract coming from them. Don't say all shit about Spotify because that deals two weeks out, at max two weeks, we'll get a deal. I mean, I, I love Spotify. Apart from the fact they pay you fucking peanuts. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> no. <true>. So cut <laughs> that out, <laughs> Mike. You need to you need to beat that out when it comes to the edit. <laughs> no, but the, the owner's about to. Uh, tr- he keeps trying to buy Arsenal. Everyone knows I'm an Arsenal fan, so. Uh, can't be any worse. Fair news. So the next challenge then that goes on is the technical, which I personally think is the best part of the show. I'd just watch it for that and then I'll give up on everything else. Because uh, that's the one where they they set a technical challenge. Um, they don't know what it is beforehand. And it looks as though the sort of the guidance um, on sort of carrying it all out is loose at best. I think it's just like an egg, some flour, <laughs> you know, whatever. Um, that is the best part because you see some right tram smashers. Yeah, I, I, the one that I watched the most recent one again, I, I saw him getting a little bit um, disheveled, I think, over the, the, you know, getting the ingredients wrong and stuff like that. But that's that's the most fun part of shows like that to me is when things go wrong. Yeah, I think they do it on purpose because it's a bit like when it, they obviously film it in the height of summer, <laughs> every summer. So I don't understand how they managed to ba- do the bake off when it's absolutely like blisteringly red hot. And they're like, oh, we're gonna this week we're gonna do the ice cream baking challenge. <laughs> and everyone's just panicking, it's melted everywhere. It all goes wrong. I was saying to Mike before we got started, the thing that I don't maybe this is just me, this probably speaks volumes to my personality, but what I don't understand is they're in direct competition, right? All the people on the show. And you'll see parts where, like the one I watched last night, uh, a woman essentially fucks up uh, <laughs> a long pie, right? 
And then one of the other contestants kind of helps her try and repair it. And I'm thinking, you guys are in competition. Like, I'd, I'd be like, oh, yeah, let me help you. You know, like, and smash it up on purpose, right? Sabotage. Mate, this wasn't planned, but I, I've actually got a clip for you that's like a perfect segue, <laughs> right? Can I get some some audio back on this? So check this out. This happened on last the last season of Bake Off. It all went wrong. <laughs> I will describe it afterwards for the for the Look listeners. at this. Oh, no. Oh, go away. Oh. <gasps> no. <laughs> <laughs> So sorry. So what happened is the, the, they've done the uh, the signature, not the signature, the the technical challenge, and she's putting the cakes up on the desk, and there was a fly there, so she's like flapped her arms and knocked the dude's <laughs> the, dude, the dude's full tray off. Win, winning mentality. I hope she won. Anything to win. <laughs> what about that? That's super sabotage. Like, when, when I, if I'm doing like a contest, right, in Major League, Eating, and sometimes you get really tight contests where you're at a table, right, and somebody right next to you, sometimes. Um, if you're eating, you might just kind of go, poof, like, give somebody a little yeah. nudge, like, set them off balance, you know, get a, a couple second advantage. It's part, all part of the game. <laughs> is that true, is it? <laughs> Games and shift, that's what you call it. As if it would get, um, like, so physical at uh, an eating competition. <laughs> yeah, no, no it's, it's, it's quite rare. Are there any, um, like, baking contests? So, like, not baking contests, competitions of, of baked goods for um, Major League Eating or any of the other organisations? I don't think so, not, not that I'm aware of. It's usually, like... Easily, readily available stuff like I don't know Twinkies or um, I don't know burgers and stuff like that. But um, I, I'm actually a little bit wounded that I've never been asked as like a bit of a you know like a celebrity judge <laughs> on, on Bake Off. Think about it. A celebrity. It makes it, it makes um, moral sense because at least I'm then gonna if there's any, there's not gonna be much food going to waste if I'm there. Mate, you're probably about the level of celebrity person that would even go on as a celebrity you know like when they're like oh would you do celebrity bake-off you're the level you're like z-list yeah well i mean like what uh, what was his name jay J from in between us went on there um, he's, he's got to way above you are he on this come off maybe said, oh, i've got more i've got about 15 times as many youtube subscribers as he has <laughs> come on but yeah no i, I, I oh he'd be a good guest i wonder if he'd come on now that he's no longer yeah, on maybe, mainstream maybe um but um yeah, I, I think I'd, I'd do the, the, the actual Bake Off. I think they, they get celebrity judges on, right, Mike? They, they've had a few over the years. I'll have to check that I've out. Not, I've, we've just established you're not a celebrity. Yeah, I mean, or a shit celebrity. Can you they, imagine? They, like, they get people, I don't know, like fucking Eric Pollard from Emmerdale and people like, you know, like <laughs> shit level celebrities to do it. So like, I don't see why they couldn't ask me to do it. All right, see, so, so, KSI did it. And I know for a fact he did, or he was in, involved in it in some way. Can we just Google how many subscribers KSI's got? Not that I'm making that comparison. Although my songs are better than his. <laughs> <laughs> Start some celebrity beef with KSI. I and, you, I, and you'd clean him out as well, mate. You'd knock him clean out. I told you, didn't I, that I got asked to do a celebrity boxing thing last week. So. I yeah, mean, which you turned him down until I told you how much they were paying. <laughs> you're like, how much? Uh, yeah, I, I know that. I know a dude, I'm not going to say what it is, that got 40 Gs. For a reason though. Like I'm not that motivated by money. And I think like if I get a, you know, it's my, red panty night. <laughs> it's red panty night. Yeah, if I get my jaw broken, then that's my career. 60 jeans, <laughs> baby. <laughs> All right, so you, you're going on, like, let's say we're going to put Beard into uh, Celebrity Bake Off. What's your speciality? Like, you must, I know you're not much of a dab hand around the kitchen. I'm actually, I, there was a point in my life, probably just like, around, I don't know why, but like when I was at uni, I, I did sometimes bake a little bit. My grandma was a really good baker, like top class. Like she would do like, uh, she didn't have like a baker, bakery or baker's shop, but um, she used to do like uh, cakes and stuff for like a ch She went to like a, a Methodist church or something and she used to do like, uh, you know, bake stuff at Christmas for people. Um, so I'm thinking it's genetic maybe. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I did, um, there was a point, I, I found it quite therapeutic, you know, at one stage I'd bake some stuff, but like really easy stuff like cornbread. I could do cornbread and I really love cornbread. So maybe I'll do that. Hey, you should, is it, what's the name of this podcast again? Breaking bread. So why have you not brought any cornbread in? Cornbread wouldn't Next you? week, I want, I want to see some cornbread. All right, I'll, I'll see what I can do. So if Channel 4 knocks, knocks you on the door, then you're going to go in? You're going to go do it? Yeah, I'd probably... Do. Well, they'd have to pay me. I mean, unless, <laughs> unless it's going to charity, right? I'll be happy to do it for charity. But like, um, yeah, I'd, I'd probably do it. Um, I think it'd be... It's food related, right? It's not just like me going on TV for no reason. Yeah, it's relevant. Because like, I, TV work is not fun. Like when I've, I've done... I, I hate doing it. But something like that, I think it's a little bit more organic right because you're essentially baking then they come speak to you for a little bit yeah, yeah. 
you drop a couple of sound bites on them <laughs> and then uh yeah I'd, I'd do it for fun yeah obviously part of the show as you get through you then go and do the show stopper which is at the end of the show um i just want to touch on that slightly because you want to touch my show stopper i want to touch your show stopper <laughs> first just a second <laughs> I don't know if you noticed on the, on the the very few shows that you've watched that I think Paul and Prue are just putting it on for telly because some of the things that they hand over that's supposed to be the showstopper that looks like it's been made in a reception class at school. Like, I just think it's ridiculous. Like, there's been some horrendous things that they've put up and they've gone, oh, really good job. Is like, that, looks, that looks incredible. And you're like, it's supposed to be a dinosaur or something. It looks nothing. That's what you, that's what you say to your kid, isn't it? Oh, it's an amazing job. It looks nothing like a dinosaur. Well, you have to show some compassion. It gets a bit old when people are doing the whole Simon Cowell act, right, and being mean all the time. So, um, but I think as well as that, I, I don't think I would judge stuff like that on too much on the physical appearance because to me, like, what it tastes like is, is paramount. So I suppose you've got to factor in the two things. Like, if it looks like shit, it might still taste good. Yeah, but you couldn't go into it. Like, we've just said that they're going to get contracts off the back of this. They can't just put out, like, shit-looking stuff if it tastes good, can you? Well, yeah, true. God, Ramsey wouldn't have this. No, well, yeah, he wouldn't. But um, Gordon Ramsay is not on the Bake Off, is he? He's like a post nine PM kind of guy. Because he swears a lot. This is a post nine PM podcast with with your mouth, not mine. I, well, I, it's it's because I get the freedom on uh, something which isn't one of my own videos to swear a little bit because I'm kind of PG thirteen most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> so when the when they've finished the, it comes to the end of the show, they've got two options at this point. This is why you've got you know the two presenters. One gets to award the star baker, and the other one boots them. Star Baker, so th- this goes back to what we said before about how underwhelming the prizes are. If you win Star Baker, everyone sits there on a the little bench and goes, well done, Dave. You made some wicked shoe pastry this week. And I was like, ah, oh, well done, Dave. And then you've got the other side where they're like, they lay on thick. They're like, oh, I've got the unfortunate job this week of uh, telling you who's not going to be in the tent next week. And they're all like, oh, even though you've, we've just watched 60 minutes of somebody being absolutely shit. You know, like they've dropped it on the floor, it's melted everywhere. <laughs> the nose going home. You know, like Jeff's Jeff's going home. We've just seen him, he's fucked up for the last 60 minutes. Jeff, Jeff unfortunately, you'll be here next week. And then it, sad music comes on, everyone comes in for a big group oh, hug. It's, it's stuff like that that I hate. And because if I was on that show, right, I'm there, I'm there to win, right? Even if I did the celebrity version, it's for charity or whatnot. Like, I'm there to win. So if somebody gets voted off, that is a cause for celebration. I might show some compassion and be like, unlucky, mate, you know, that was a bit wank, but you are good at doing, <laughs> you, are, you are good at baking generally, you know, keep at it. But I, I wouldn't, I certainly wouldn't be, oh, you know, I'm so sad that this person's leaving. We, we got to know each other really well over the last 17 days. I feel like he's a brother or whatever. See, I, I didn't even believe that. So like, they're all crying and stuff. I bet, so that obviously they're like, oh, and next week we're doing this. And then when they're doing their sound bites at the end, they're like, oh, this week's been really difficult. I think there's, I think they shoot it just day after day consecutively. So like they've known Jeff for three days and there's like, they're there crying in corner, Jeff's going up. Like you don't even know the guy, you've literally spent two days with him. I do find that, but that's, that's true of like all reality style TV shows. They try and make it a little bit more, I, they try to give it more gravity than it really has, right? So there's always some kind of sad backstory. There's nobody that ever just turns up and they're like, yeah, I've had a decent life, but I'm good at, you know, I'm good at baking. Um, I'm here to win. They've got, there's got to be some kind of emotional connection, some reason to use some stock music, which is a bit sad with harps in it and violins <laughs> and stuff, you know? Yeah, Jeff deserves it, to be fair. Anyway, um, the next thing I wanted to bring up was, have you seen recently, um, this is almost like current events, current events, dum, dum, dum. Uh, have you seen the bakery in Leeds that's been getting some some grief? Oh, yeah. Get what's, baked. what's it called? Get, get baked. baked. Yeah. I reckon they're into the, the grows. Like it's, it's a front. Get baked. You get it. It's got to be on it. <laughs> get, well, Just it, me? No. All right. I think maybe they... they well, I don't want to... Um, I don't want to make uh, allegations, <laughs> but I think it's supposed to be just a funny turn of phrase, but they might be into a little bit of grass. I don't know. It, hey, it's legal in New York. Yeah, but they're, in, they're based in Leeds. Yes. Anyway, carry on. <laughs> Yeah, no, I've, I've, well, you want me to tell the story about Yeah, well, I, yeah, I, yeah, what's going on? You told me about it, so we, we touched on it. Yeah, well, I, I, there was a, yeah, there, there's a, a bakery in Leeds. I'm not affiliated with them or anything, but um, they sell, they, they, they kind of became famous, I think, for, they, they, they don't really conduct themselves like at most businesses, right? So um, on, on social media and stuff like that, though, if people give them bad reviews, which are um, not, um, unwarranted yeah which are unwarranted uh, then they'll say funny stuff back which I like you know that, that kind of grows your social following to an extent right but the, the most famous I think for they created something they call the Bruce right which is a big uh, giant chocolate cake it's named after you know Bruce Bogtrotter from Matilda um, and they sell giant slices of, uh, of that which I've heard is really good 
they're like ultra expensive. I think it's like 12 quid for a slice, but they are For a huge. slice of cake. Yeah, but they are like, like they're half the size of me pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're, they're really big slices, but they, they, they went um, viral, as the, the kids say these days, um, because they, re- they got, somebody went in there and ordered something. It wasn't one of the cakes. Maybe it's like a donut or something. Yeah. And it turned out like they somehow detected that this um, thing had American sprinkles on which are illegal in this country because uh, they've got maybe like E-numbers in or something. Um, so, uh, yeah, the, the owner was kind of going wild on Facebook. Oh, so. Bikes, we'll pop a picture up on screen and, and I will describe it. So the, it looks like the merch line has, has dropped and it's a white T-shirt. It says illegal sprinkles and it's a rolled up $100 bill with sprinkles coming out the side. <laughs> These guys, man. Get baked. If you are listening or watching, send us some of those T-shirts. Small for me, not medium. Um, and uh, I don't know. It's medium. L- large for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's large winter, on ba- winter, it? We're, we're getting a bit fluffy over winter. L- large on basis of height, not so much arm size. But um, <laughs> yeah, so, so send us some. We'll uh, we'll put them on on the pod. But um, yeah, I thought that was a, a, a neat little story that they um, somebody went in and I who, how did somebody figure out they were American sprinkles? Have we got any pictures of a Mike? Have you got any pictures of the sprinkles? I think that the American sprinkles are a lot more vibrant in color. So I think anyone awesome. who knows their sort of thing about what sprinkles are better than others. Like you'd know straight away because, you know. I wonder why they're, why are they illegal? I mean, if they're fit for human consumption. They're like, they're just like full of like carcinogenics and asbestos and stuff. What they're like, that's probably the deal. It'll be like. Maybe, I don't know, but um, yeah, I thought, I just thought it was like, it was, it was a fun like little event. I think that happened. um, It's pretty scary though to get shut down because you're using American sprinkles. Like. Well, they just, they just said they had to stop making them, I think. And he, the, I, I, one thing I did enjoy is the courage of the dude's convictions because he said, fuck you, I'm not using English sprinkles because they're shit. <laughs> and he said, I'm not selling this anymore. Um, so yeah, I mean, that, that, that's, that's cool, man. Don't sell out. Yeah, he's got balls. Oh, this is, there was a shirt there for you that I've just seen pop up that says, hope you fail. I'm going to, every time I come on a shoot with you, now I'm going to wear that. I'm going to buy that shirt and I'm going to wear it. Oh, come on, you know, I, I, I very rarely ever fail. <laughs> right, yeah, so Mike's just, we will drop these pictures in. These are absolutely luminous. Um, Fuck, man. Should I <laughs> put some sunscreen on? <laughs> what? Those, those are bright. That looks like pieces of Lego. No wonder they got clocked, man, straight away. Yeah, I mean, still, why would you bring that up? Because people have got not to complain about now, have they? Like, COVID's coming to an end, so, hopefully. Tell- we're going winter lockdown, so we're going to do a winter lockdown uh, podcast series because Beard can't do any more filming. He's sick of filming in his kitchen. Mrs. Beard hates him, making a mess. That's been true for the last like, <laughs> nine years, though. Yeah, if, if, if people want to complain about something, don't complain about local businesses just trying to get by. Just come on my videos and have a, have a whine about oh, me like we, a scruff. We'll do a podcast episode on the comment section of your of your. That'll videos. be a long one. That'll be a long one. <laughs> You thick skin though, you're like a rhino. Rhino's nut sack. <laughs> <laughs> In keeping with the theme, uh, I believe Mike has set as a challenge, a food challenge. Okay, I thought I was getting the day off. <laughs> so I've actually been down to the shops and we've got three different items from three different bakeries. One, well, two being sort of more budget bakeries. You've got Greg's and Coupland's, <laughs> Coupland's being a more Yorkshire brand. And then there's a more high end bakery in there as well. Do we have the budget for this? We, High end. <laughs> so what, what we're going to do is we're going to blind taste test each of them and you've got to try and guess which which is each. So you've got Greg's, yep. Coupland's and High End and then you get to rank each one from best to worst. Roger that. For each I, correct one you get a point as well. Ooh. So it's a comp... Now, now, uh, now, now oh, I'm interested. Here we go. This- I'm just going to smash those off the table. I <laughs> Three points you should nail this because like with your palate and, and your actual career choice, yeah, this should be... If I lose, this is going to be... It's, it's going to be a dark day, isn't <laughs> this it? Is, this is going to be such a shit podcast for listeners because we're going to break the number one rule of podcasting which is just like, don't eat down the microphone. <laughs> I could eat a little bit away. All right, bring it on, Mikey. Let's have it. Right, so this is it. Round number one. We just had it uh, launched on the table at us. We're going for sausage rolls. and we've So we're having to... We're going to rank them. In, in the order of best to worst. That's right, Mike. Yep. And we're going to guess which one is which. Are we ranking them uh, like uh, as together, like which one we think is best or like individually? Rank them together. All right. Nice. Come, come to like, get some kind of common so a, understanding. So, yeah, it's a team a team effort for that, but points are at stake for those that can guess where each one is from. Right, okay. Right, which one do you want to go for first? So we got... Um, 
You've got we, Greg's, uh, Greg's Coupland's, and then some kind of luxury, yeah, high end one, right? This looks budget as fuck. This looks <laughs> like this looks like a prison sausage roll. Just gonna get all of my beard here. It goes deep on that sausage. Do you see that? <laughs> what, what did you say in, that, in in some videos? A sausage. Um, what's your what's your phrase? A sausage gobbler. Oh man, I've got tons of sausage. <laughs> a sausage a day keeps a doctor away. Um, yeah, I just love sausage. That's not bad. The crunch factor's poor on that. Yeah, that's not good. That I, I fucking hope that's the budget one. Um, I don't like it. It's it's not bad. Um, I'm definitely going with that's the bu- most budget. I think that is. Should we try the I rest. I don't want to saw it because I yeah, let's I, try I, the rest in I, case because like this one looks like it's all right, but it could throw throw a wobbler. Where's the palate cleanser, Mike? I need some like lemon <laughs> lemon water. <laughs> All right, so onto number two then. Let's go for this one in the middle. This looks a bit soggy. Looks like it's been... Has it been in your bag all day, this, Mike? What's going on with this? <laughs> it wouldn't be a Beard Meets Food video without having some some crust, crusty stuff in his beard, would it? That has got... Um, I think I've sussed this. Man, after, after all the bake-off that I've watched... I'm telling you that's underbaked. Yeah, it's got um, what I would call an almost rubbery texture, which is something you definitely don't want in a sausage roll. Is my being all right, by the way? <laughs> all good, man. <laughs> all right, on to the, uh, the last oh, one then. On. This looks like this looks because it's bigger, right? Look at that. You get an amount of sausage in there. That's making me feel like less of a man. Look at it. <laughs> it's like ASMR as well, isn't it? You can hear the crunch. I think I've got this sussed. That is by far the best tasting one. That's really nice, that one. It's got a good amount of sausage in there. It feels like it's actual sausage and not sawdust. And uh, there's a decent amount of crisp. It's, it's, it's uh, what they say on... Uh, on uh, <laughs> it's, stuck, it's, it's, stuck back, it's stuck to the back of my teeth. <laughs> they say it's, uh, it's a good bake, don't they, on the Great British Bake Off? Yeah. That is a good bake. So um, I'm, I'm going to get... This is the... The, uh, that is poverty, that. Luke. That's Coupland's. I think, I'm, I'm sad to say it because I, w- I would rather say Coupland's is better than Greg's um, for kind of local solidarity. But that's Coupland's, that's Greg's, that's luxury, I think. I'm with you on that. I think these should get deducted a point for not baking it properly. Like, it can't be. I'm pretty sure that they've got presets in there as well. You know, like, I th- I'm pretty sure, like, when they put them in the oven at Greg's, it'll just it'll press sausage roll and that'll give it. There's no way that they're going to have to, like, go, oh, yes, you know, it looks like about a 30 minute bake. It's in the fucking bake off, is it? Yeah, you you would think so. Like it's kind of a McDonald's situation where you yeah. can't really get it wrong. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm saying I'm, I'm saying this one is. Are you, are you in agreement? With I'm I'm 100 percent in agreement, but I do want to win this as well. But I, I, yeah, I think we're aligned on this. So we're, we're in agreement. It's going to be Coupland's, Greg's, Posh Gaff. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. All right. Three for three. Three all. Ooh. It's three rounds, so it's all right. And is this the order that you'd rank them? Yeah, I mean, they're already in order for me. This is appalling, right? I mean, I'm sorry, but not sorry at the same time. That's middle of the road. Um, that That is a sausage roll. These are, these are kind of uh, pale imitations of sausage rolls. Yeah, I hate to agree with you, but... How much was that one, Mike? It was about a pound. They were all about the same price to me. <laughs> Get off. They've charged a quid for that. Something like that. Well, we're not getting a Copeland brand do, deal, are we? Do, we? do we know where this is from? Can we uh, reveal that? Or? It's a it's a local one in, in town. All right. Well, local one in town. <laughs> I can't remember the name. <laughs> we'll put it on the screen down here if we, uh, if we can find out where it is. Props. That was a good sausage roll. Next round. All right. So it's round two. And uh, in this round, we're going with steak bakes. A classic steak bake. This is a cornerstone of British cuisine. Have you ever done a steak bake challenge? Is that one of the, have you done that? I haven't done steak bake. Last Christmas I did um, the festive bake from Greg's. Oh yeah. And I, I can't remember how many I did. I think maybe I did like 30, <laughs> I think. But uh, they, I love those. I don't, I don't really like much from Greg's, I'll be honest. Sorry, Greg's, but um, those are pretty good. We're we gonna get stuck in. Let's get it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
This looks like a dog food bake. The fuck? Ah, oh, you can't eat that shot. That is that what those look like? <laughs> Google Google blue waffle. Google blue waffle. That <laughs> Googling that. You know what? I bet that came from the same one as a really, really bad sausage roll. It tastes like corned beef. All right, next one. Um, I think when this seems to be, I think there's a common theme because this one's got quite a glaze on it. You never know, though. You never know. Oh. You put it on the wrong plate, man. How are we going to know which one's which? That's tasty, that one. That's more fit for human consumption. That's I some think. good eats, that. That is some good eats. It's, it's got the crisp. It's got like a nice little, little glaze on top. I think we both know that, that one is probably the premium one. That is but a premium. Between these two, I don't know. Which is going to be the, the worst. Right, last one. This looks just as bad as the first one. There's less juice in this, less kind of meat juice. <laughs> mm. I think I got it sussed. Oh, can I go first? Yeah. So I'm going to rank these third, like three, two, one. I reckon that's the cheapest one. They're both very, very bad. Like, I think they're on par with each other. But that's very bad, and that's very, very, that's also very bad. But I'm going to go three, two. That's clearly the posh one because it's got, it's all shiny and stuff. So I'm going to guess that, what's it called? Couplins. Yeah. Right, I'm going to go Couplin, Couplins, Couplins, <laughs> Couplins. Um, that's Greg's. And uh, and that's, that's the luxury one. The luxury item. They, they definitely weren't shy with the egg wash on this. Yeah. You can take the piss out of oh, my baking ability all you like, posh. but I can identify that. That is definitely the posh one, I think. Look at the lamination as well. I don't know if that's true. I heard it, I heard it on Bake Off. Is the lamination in this? It's just the, it's just the egg wash, isn't it? <laughs> um, I, uh, for the sake of making this an interesting podcast, I'm going to say that's the worst one. Right. That's, that's Copeland's. That's Greg's. And that's the posh one. Scores of the rose, Mike. Yeah, so the winner in this round was actually Beard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. ah, what did I get wrong? Which one? Uh, so you actually got one point. So you got the posh one was obviously the posh one. Uh, but you got your Coupland's and your Greg's the wrong way around. I do feel bad actually saying Coupland's being the bad one because it's still a reputable, you know. Don't, you know what? I, I like, I'm going to say this for, for, not just for uh, the sake of being kind. I do like Coupland's because, some, especially the sweet stuff, is generally better than I don't even Greg's. know what Coupland's is, you know. I've not, I can't, I think. I, it's kind of like a, it, well, it's, it's like a Greg's, but it's mostly in the north, right, Mike? I think so, yeah. I think it's a Yorkshire thing. It's like a knockoff one, a knockoff Greg's. Well, no, because Greg's wasn't, hasn't been around that long, if you think about it. Greg's morphed, right, from Thurston's or something. I know my food history. It was something like that. Anyway, the, the, I mean, Coupland's is, is it's a much cheaper price point. So we're not saying they're, I mean, we are saying it's pretty bad, but um, I, there's not much difference between those and Greg's. Right. Just a slight difference for me. All right. So Beard's on six points. Josh, you're on four. <sighs> Going into the final round, which is the dessert round. Oh, I need to call it back here. There's no way I can lose <laughs> this, I'm telling you. <laughs> four. Right, right. I'm, I'm keeping this bit in the edit. In the, like this needs to stay in the edit. What are you passing? Is it? Is this what has life's come to? Like I used to make professional videos for a living, and now I'm here. I'm sat across from you. What the fuck is that? Ooh, this is going to be tough for this one, Mike. You're taking the piss with this. <laughs> hey, did you drop this one? No. Fuck that's off. How I, that's how I travelled. I didn't get dropped. This is, you know, it's funny because um, I don't know if you know, but I actually did uh, a video like the world, the world's biggest vanilla slice. It's a while back now. Ah, yeah, I think um, I remember that. Or custard slice or Bavarian slice or whatever you call it. Um, yeah, and it was like, it was like three feet long or something. It made me want to throw up because <laughs> like, I mean, the, it was mostly the, 
gooey stuff in the middle, right? Is that is it custard that that's inside that? Some kind of fuck. It looks like a, some anemic scrambled eggs in this one. <laughs> I'm, I'm putting it out there, right? I'm not eating that. I'm not. I'm not trying it. I'm not eating it. I'm I'll not- eat it. I'll eat it. Like, <laughs> there's one thing I can contribute to this podcast: is eating stuff, right? I'm, I'm gonna get stuck in, right? So we're going. I mean. You get a little design on top of this one, so I'm not sure if that's a, a bit of evidence as to which one maybe it is. But um, these are sandwiches that kind of stuck together. Jesus, man, what the? F- Come on, Mike, lad. Can-, <laughs> Can I have that one that you've just stuck your thumb straight through? <laughs> I tell you what, I'll lick it straight off your thumb. We'll turn it into like we haven't got a Spotify deal yet, so we'll just turn it to a. a one yeah, of I've, just, I've pure butchered this man. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Mate, what, it won't come apart. <laughs> Why don't you just try and get a fork full of each? Fork off, Mike. I ain't eating that. <laughs> yeah. Right. I, I'm just going to break a little bit off here. Break, breaking bread. Jesus. <laughs> We totally didn't think this podcast through at all. Like, it's such a mess, such a mess. Such a mess. <laughs> I'm surprised because I thought this one's going to be really good, but it feels like eating a fucking odor eater. You know, since you put shoes. Oh man, that's not crispy at all. Yeah, I'm, I'm not buying that. <laughs> Mate, <laughs> can you eat that one next? I eat that. Right, there's a, there's a black peat. I'm going to hold that up for camera. There's something black. Up. If this is my side, I don't know what got into the bakery last night, but it's now in the, the pastry. Give it here. Give it here. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to assume <laughs> that, that, that's the bad one. My God, if you're trying to play a trick on me and this is like your spooge in a fucking pastry, <laughs> <laughs> this looks gr- absolutely grim. The icing actually stuck to the bag on that one. So if there's no icing, then that, that's why. He's glazed it himself. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> It looks like scrambled eggs, man. What the fuck's that? <laughs> What's the verdict, man? It doesn't taste worse than that, actually. Yeah? It has a, a slightly odd aftertaste. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let me, this one looks like it's probably... The last one. That's, that's Mike juice that you... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Get that fucking cut out. That, that'll preclude us from a Spotify deal. Right, th- this looks um healthy amount of filling in there. Looks nice and flaky. It's a good bake. This looks like a biscuit, man. It's like... <laughs> That's a custard slice. That's good, that one. I, this is this is actually this one this round has been complicated by the fact that I feel emotional after like after seeing you eat that. <laughs> <laughs> some of them look actually worse than they taste, and some of them look better than they taste. So I'm gonna say, I think this has to be. <laughs> the, I mean, I can't believe this is professionally sold. This has to be the worst one. I'm sure Mike made that in the back. <laughs> like, that is absolutely <laughs> disgusting. It doesn't. It doesn't look good. It doesn't taste great. Uh, but it doesn't taste actually that much worse than that. That's kind of uh, that gets by because it looks a bit better. I'm gonna say this one is Coupland's. That one's Greg's, and I'm gonna say this is the posh one. Josh. Yes, I'm. I'm with you on this. I think. I think exactly the same as you. That's the worst one. And that's. That's the best one. So we're saying that that's. The posh place. Did that's you say that was the posh place? That's what I'm saying, yeah. Right, so I'm going posh place. Greg's. <laughs> Mike's back pocket, we looks at it. <laughs> cool, right. cool ones, yeah. All right, so from sort of camera on the left, uh, the first one is actually the posh one. This is the posh one. Oh, I wish you'd have known that. It's got like lines in it. Thing on top, yeah. The middle one 
is Coupland's. Oh, I'm actually really happy it's Coupland's because we've given them a bad rap. And I did actually just say that Coupland's do better desserts. What, this is Coupland's? That's Coupland's, yeah. They that do, they're bad. good for dessert. And obviously the last one is Greg's. Get off, that's a Greg's. <laughs> I'm quite happy about that, but like, yeah. I can't believe that's Greg's. I thought Greg's had like a McDonald's thing going on where he's like, is that, is that uniformity? You, you know what it is? <laughs> Does it like scrambled eggs? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Coupland's bringing it back with the dessert. As I, I, I would expect no less. All right, mate. So that's well, a point for each in that one. So who won then? So that gives us uh, the winner is Beard, of course. Ah. Naturally. I mean, I couldn't really lose that, could I? Well done, little guy. <laughs> <laughs> Right, do you want to wrap this up then? I reckon that's been a horrendous episode for everybody that's <laughs> listening. Um, probably not much better for those that have watched, but as always, um, thank you for watching and listening. Um, you can follow us on social media, at Beard Meets Food is everywhere, at the Josh Goodgen. You can follow the podcast when we know what the uh, actual handle is. We'll probably get that sorted soon. We'll pop it up on screen. And uh, yeah, thanks for listening. Thank you very much. We apologise. <laughs> Catch you on the next one.